This week, synagogues all over the world began the reading of the book of Leviticus. Of the five books of the Torah, if you ask the average person, which one would you be most happy if we skipped? I'll bet the answer would be Leviticus. So should we skip it? Shalom, my friends. No, that is not really my question. We should not skip the book of Leviticus. I think it's the first time I've begun a video by saying no, my friends. I always start, start out yes. But no, we're not going to skip the book of Leviticus. And there are reasons, good reasons, for not doing so. But I understand why some people would say Leviticus is not relevant to modern life just doesn't speak to us today. And it's true, there are passages in Leviticus, such as the opening passages, which deal with the ritual of animal sacrifice. That's primarily a manual for the priesthood. The priests in the ancient temple officiated at animal sacrifice. They had to know what the rituals were. They also functioned as public health officials. And there are passages in Leviticus that deal with skin diseases and infestation that can contaminate the walls of a home or a fabric. It has sections that deal with bodily discharges. There's some of it's unsavory stuff and maybe doesn't speak as directly to us today as some of the other passages of Torah. But it doesn't mean they don't have anything to say. There's an interesting thing. Jewish children in traditional yeshiva settings begin their Torah studies not with the fabulous stories of Genesis or the amazing account of the Exodus from Egypt, but with the study of the laws of sacrifices. Why would you start children's study off with such dry and seemingly irrelevant material? And the traditional answer is children are pure. The sacrifices were pure. Those who are pure should occupy themselves with the study of things that are also pure. All right, fair enough. That's one answer. Today, I'd like to offer another one. And that is that implied in the book of Leviticus, in these very chapters about animal sacrifice, is an important lesson for anyone, young or old, to learn. And that is, sacrifice is a necessary part of life. That is, it's necessary if you want to achieve anything in life that requires effort. I, for example, play in a local concert band. There are times I would love to take out my instrument and just play songs that I know, that I can play beautifully, that I'll really enjoy. But I have to practice my parts for the upcoming concert. It's not as much fun. And it's certainly not as much fun as putting on a ball game, or reading a book, or any number of things that I could mention. But I can't let the band down. I can't let the conductor down. If I did, I'd be letting myself down. I have to prepare to play as well as I can play in our upcoming concert. Now this musical analogy will become very important in just a second. But this is not limited to music. This applies to anything in life in which you want to improve, in which you hope to excel. It could be that you want to improve your creative writing. It could be that you want to improve your skill at photography. Many photographers watch these videos. 
Photographers know that sacrifice is necessary. If you want to shoot in the best light, you either get up before the sun and shoot in the early morning light, or you stay out late and you shoot in the beautiful evening light. But high noon may be convenient, but it is absolutely not the best time to go out and do most kinds of photography. This example applies, as I said, to any area in, of life in which you want to grow, improve, and maybe someday excel. Whatever it happens to be is as individual as those watching this video today. But I said that a musical example, a musical analogy would become very important. And I'm going to conclude with that analogy now. Isaac Stern, the great violinist, had performed a magnificent concert in New York. And according to the story, he was approached after the concert by one of his fans who said to him, Maestro, I would give anything to be able to play like you do. And according to the story, Isaac Stern responded, would you give 12 hours a day, every day, for 20 years? Because that's what I gave. My friends, we're not all going to become Isaac Stearns. But without the hard work and the sacrifice it entails, we will never even become our fullest and best selves. And becoming the best that we can be, not that what somebody else can be, but the best that we can be requires work, requires effort, and therefore requires sacrifice. My friends, if you would be so kind, as to subscribe to our YouTube channel and help it grow, you can do so by clicking on my face, which appears right over there. Or have a look at the last video I released by clicking on its icon, which appears right over there. As ever, until next time, Shabbat Shalom.